Hi everyone, so um, I just showed you how to um, ring an eyeball in Anime Pro and Harmony and now I'm going to show you the same concept of how to do it in Anime. So when you're working with Animate, it's a layer based compositing system. So you've got your layers over here and you have to add all of your effects and work with your effects in the layers. And so it's possible to do some types of rigs over here, of course, but it's a little bit more limited in terms of what it can do in effects. Um, in this case, I can achieve the same effect in Animate as I can with Anime Pro. Uh, but in some cases, you just simply can't because the layers don't show enough information to be able to make those types of complex connections that we would make in Anime Pro. So let's just start off here. First thing that I want to do is I want to gather together the highlight, the pupil, and the iris layer so that I can animate all three of these together. And so I will add a peg layer to my pupil and then I'll just drag and drop my highlight and my iris layers in there so that I can animate these three together. And you'll notice by the way on the pupil layer that I've put the pivot point in the center just like I did in Anime Pro so that I can um, dilate um, that pupil or contract it as needed for different scenes um, or for one scene. And um, as I mentioned also, it is not necessary for the vast majority of shots to do a, um, an eye this complex because um, you know you wouldn't see that kind of dilation um, on an iris or on a pupil um, unless you're very close. So it's a very cool type of rig to do if you have to do a close-up shot. If you're doing a bit of a further away shot then I'd recommend that you put the pupil, the iris, and the highlight all on one layer together and then you can just animate those together because um, you know you wouldn't see that contraction anymore. But this is a very cool way of doing it and I want to show you the most sort of advanced technique here. Okay, so now that I've got these three together, um, then you'll notice if I try to animate this pupil or um, peg layer that contains all three of these, that my pivot point is in the wrong place. So I talked about pivot points in my tip of the week last week. But in this case, I'll just use a ro my rotate layer to um, drag and drop the pivot point of my peg in the center because um, since I'm not going to be swapping views on this drawing, it's totally fine for me just to use a peg layer for it. Um, and then now um, that I've got that in, this, in the right place, I can animate all three of these elements around together. And then I can also animate these guys separately on their drawing layers. Of course, you wouldn't want to animate the position of your pupil, but you can always animate the um, dilation and contraction. Okay, so now the next thing I want to do is I want to isolate the white of the eye so that I can, um, you know, use that as a mask for my uh, iris and pupil. So if I want to isolate the white of the eye, the first thing I want to do here is I want to add my color override effect. And then with that color override effect, if I drag and drop my eyelid layer onto it, then I'll be able to access the layer properties of the color override and it will show me the, um, the um, palette here that's being used by this eye. So this now shows a very important concept also, which is naming your palette property properly, which I mentioned also in the Anime Pro video. It's almost even more critical to name things properly when you're working in Animate because, as I'm sure you guys will know, um, the standard um, animate palette that comes in there has many, many different, um, you know, colors in it. It comes with like a hundred colors in it. So if you are trying to isolate one color in that list of a hundred, it's going to be very difficult for you to know which color you're trying to isolate unless you name things properly. And um, even if you're working in animate, I would also recommend getting rid of colors that you're not using uh, because I find that it's much easier if you're going to be doing compositing, if you're going to be doing effects, anything like that, it's much easier just to have the colors that you need. Having additional colors um, might seem great, but it really does slow things down actually if you're going to be doing a lot of inking and painting or a lot of effects. So um, now that we've got our palette set up, I'll go back to my color override module and I can take the eye white layer and I can drag and drop it into the same render selected colors only um, tab that I had inside of um, Anime Pro. And now that I've got that in there, then I can um, use this color override 
on the eyelid now as a mask with all of these other layers over here. So let's add our mask. And then when I add the mask layer, you'll see that there's two places. There's the mask that has the star next to it, and then there's a mask that has the box next to it. And you wanna put the, um, the mask itself inside the one that has the box, and you wanna put the original drawings inside the star. So I'll just um, collapse in here my pupil layer, and I'll put that inside the star. And then I'm going to take the color override with the um, eyelid layer and put that inside the mask. And just like when we're doing this in Animate Pro, it does the opposite of what we want. So we have to double click on the mask layer and then click on inverted. And now you'll see that it is cutting off um, that pupil automatically with the edge of the eye. But just like with Animate Pro, when you do this, you need a copy of the original one going back to um, the main timeline here so that you can um, access or so that you can see it when you're animating the eye. So this is the one thing that's a little bit tricky when you're working with Animate versus Animate Pro, that when you're working with Animate Pro, you can just take that connection and you can make two connections down to your composite and, um, and then you're just animating one eyeball. With Animate, you've got to do a clone on the selected layers. And when you clone the selected layer, you can drag the clone out. And this is all fine and good, um, but the only thing that you have to be aware of is that when you're animating a clone, um, then the, um, the drawings are tied together in the sense that if I make a change to one drawing, let's say I'm just gonna take this eye and I'm gonna add an X to it. So you'll see that if I make that change on one drawing, that change is also made on the other one. Um, it's made on both clones. So that type of a change is cloned from one drawing to another. we will just undo that. But you'll notice that the exposure here is separate. So um, it's kind of better if you want to animate um, blinks and whatnot to animate them all on one eyelid and then just um, copy and paste exposure from one to the other that way the exposure will match um, and that's really the best way of doing things in animate but let's just say for example i want to do the same thing that i did in my animate pro example i'm going to extend the exposure on my eyelid and then i also need to extend the exposure on my pupil and so now that it's all extended then i'll take my transform tool and i'll double check it looks like uh the order here ah yes i don't know Pupil is on top. Oh, I see what I did. There's some kind of a keyframe here. Let's take that keyframe out. All right. Uh, so now that I've got um, these guys cutting off here automatically, I can take my, uh, my pupil um, group there and I can animate the position to the other side and I can do the same thing where I'm going to make it skinnier on one side to get that optical illusion as the eyeball is animating and then I just want to remove this extraneous keyframe that I've added there somehow. So now we see it animating from one side to the other. So um, that's how we would do this same type of eyeball in Animate as opposed to doing it in Animate Pro. So the only real limitation here when working with Animate is that you can't do that direct connection with your eyelid so you have to do the clone and then when you do your clone you're going to have to copy and paste exposure from one to the other. So that's it on the um, tip of the week this week on how to rig the eyeball. So stay tuned next week.